That's the place for fun and noise, and that's the place for girls and boys. So let's all go down the strand. We're gonna shout out, have a banana at the appropriate time. Let's all go down the strand. Oh, what a happy man. Well, I'll be leader, you can walk behind. Let's all go and see what we can find. Let's all go down the strand. Oh, what a happy man. That's the place for fun and noise. That's the place for girls and boys. Let's all go down the strand. Right, you see where we're going with this then? Yes, It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tickle Mary, the sweetest girl I know. Goodbye, Piccadilly. Farewell, Leicester Square. It's a long, long way to Tipperary. You should all have a copy of a programme, but if you haven't, please collect one from the organiser's tent, which is the red gazebo with the two flags flying. Uh, there's a lot of dogs, uh, will be a lot of dogs on site today, so please respect the, uh, the waste bins. Uh, a water supply could be quite important for anyone that wants one, and uh, the water supply is in the children's area, um, which is right next to a... Um, a big blue uh, steel building uh, over in this direction. Toilets uh, are available in the community centre and they are also signposted in the school. So straight in the school, follow the signs. And this is one occasion when you can leave your mobiles on. So that's all the briefing and I'll hand you back to Tony. Thank you very much, Ray. That's great. So you all know what to do now, and you know, all know where everything is. Uh, before we do the official opening of the fete, I'd like to introduce Elaine Robertson from, let me get this right, the South Central Ambulance NHS Foundation Trust. And she'll explain, I think, a bit more about what they're, um, what they're, they're aiming to do uh, and what they do do. Uh, so, Elaine, could you just probably tell everybody a bit how, what your role is? Uh, within the community. Thank you. Okay, we are community first responders. So when you dial 999 to call for an ambulance, you will most likely get us first if we are on scene because we respond from home or from local areas. So we'll get there first just to do some basic life support while we wait for the ambulance. The ambulance will always be on its way, but at least you've got someone there to give you a bit of support while you're waiting. Obviously trying as best we can to get as many um, AEDs automatic defibrillators around the country as possible. They cost a lot of money as I'm sure you know. We can show you how to work them if you come over to our community first responder stall later on the day. Um, and as many as we can raise money to have the better, the more lives we can save. And there are quite a number of these defibrillators are scattered around certainly this area, aren't they? I think the idea is to raise enough money to, for another three. Yeah, another three we need. They're, they're in well, there's quite a few around here, actually. But yes, there are three more needed immediately within a mile of, of where we're standing now. So that would be good. We're saving up the money. So, uh, give generously. Uh, thanks very much, Elaine. Thanks for your time. Uh, and thanks for all the work your uh, trust does in and around the area. And now uh, we're going to have a very special moment. We're going to introduce... Uh, the gentleman that's going to open today's fate, officially open. Uh, could you give, put your hands together, please, for Lord Howe. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you very much for coming along. I know uh, you had a, a, a long relationship, your family's had a long relationship with this community, with this area. That's right, and I personally feel very fortunate to continue that uh, connection um, my wife and I have lived uh, locally at Penn House for 30 years and more, and uh, the farmland that you see around uh, th this area, or around Penn Street and Penn, is farmland that, that we farm, and uh, it's a, a source of great pride that we can keep the footpaths open for everybody to enjoy, 
and enhance the landscape as we try to do every year. Well, I think a lot of people here will have walked over some of your land at some point, I'm sure, through those wonderful footpaths and woods, uh, which I know I've had tremendous pleasure from, and I'm sure lots of people here have. I had to ask you one question which came to me strangely. Is it true that Handel wrote some of the Messiah at uh, your home? It's not quite true, but my shame. My family had uh, another house up in the Midlands in Leicestershire, which we don't own anymore. And Handel did compose uh, up there because that was the house occupied by the man who put together li the librettos for the Messiah and a number of other works that Handel wrote. So you're partly right. There's a big connection with my family and Handel. Just a lovely bit of uh, trivia there. I'm going to hand over to you now, Lord Howe, to do the official opening, if that's all right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Well, it is a great privilege for me to uh, have been asked to uh, perform the official opening ceremony uh, today for the Hazelmere Fate. But before I do so, it is surely appropriate uh, that um, I should pay tribute to the people who have made this event uh, possible. These events don't just happen by themselves, as we all know. So on behalf of us all, I would just like to acknowledge the huge creative team effort that the committee has put in. The committee have fantastic uh, organizing experience. They worked for the best part of a year behind the scenes on this project under the able chairmanship of Ray Cox. You can't have a good fate without good management. So huge thanks to them all. But a good fate also needs money. Uh, it, it needs funding. And that funding is made sustainable by all the stallholders, the advertisers, the sponsors, and those who give grants to uh, this event. So I want to thank them as well. And it's also, um, I need hardly say, made possible by everybody here who comes to support the fate, um, from near and not so near. Um, and the bonus that we get from that, of course, is an even greater sense of community, which is wonderful. And that sense of community uh, cohesion um, is made even greater by the many local businesses who've made the effort to support this event and thereby put back something into the community that supports them. So that is corporate responsibility at work uh, as, we, uh, as we look at it. And you can see it in the programs made visible there. We've got 115 activities and stalls today, which is amazing, so we can enjoy ourselves in a huge number of ways, but also raise money for good causes at the same time. So with thanks to all those uh, involved, it gives me great pleasure to declare the 157th Hazelmere Fate officially open. Thank you so much. What a great... What a great summary of what we were doing here. Thank you very much indeed. And just to round it off, uh, as we did last year, we have the uh, cycle arm of the British Legion here just to finish off this opening ceremony. And uh, they're going to come on. Here we are with the cycle arm of the British Legion. They look a lot worse and more frightening than I can assure you they are. I have a friend here today who's a very big uh, guy in the British Legion who I think has now worked with these guys, yeah? Yeah? Thank you. Uh, the, the truth is, I think I've had smaller cars. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, about, I think, how are we? Okay. I would now move on to our uh, next item today, which will be featured again during the afternoon. And ladies and gentlemen, will you put your hands together, please, for the Chiltern Hills Brass Band. Thank you.